Low cost consumer electronics are almost a dime a dozen these days. You can now find a smartphone or laptop for just a few hundred dollars without having to compromise on features. That said, many affordable devices are often riddled with bloatware or have performance issues. The Techlast F5 promises to be something different. It's available now for $324.99 from gearbest.com. So can it live up to these expectations as a low cost, bloatware free, high performance Windows 10 laptop? The Techlast F5 comes with Windows 10 Home, pre-installed. It uses the Intel Celeron 4100 CPU and uses the Intel UHD graphics 600 GPU. It displays 11.6 inches and touchscreen and in full HD. It comes with 8 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and 128 gigabytes of internal storage thanks to an SSD. There is a one megapixel front facing camera and connectivity is provided by a Bluetooth 4.2 connection and Wi-Fi. Now if you have a look around online you'll see that some people have commented that the Tech Last F5 looks a bit like a MacBook. Now this comparison isn't entirely inaccurate. I mean it is a laptop but there's nothing here that actually suggests the kind of premium design of a MacBook. So I think actually these comments speak more to Apple's influence over the market rather than anything specific about the F5. That said though, the F5 is a relatively slim device. It measures just slightly smaller than an A4 piece of paper and is only half an inch thick. This means that it is slim enough to just put it in your bag and kind of take it around with you and probably forget about it. You know, it's not too heavy and it's pretty small. Interestingly, the chassis is actually made of aluminium, which is unusual for an affordable device. Most low cost devices are usually wrapped in plastic of some sort but this one is different. So to have an aluminium body and weigh just over a kilogram is quite a feat. However, there do have to be compromises somewhere. And on the F5, this comes in form of a compact keyboard. It's perfectly functional, but there are a few keys missing. So things like the home and page up and page down on that. Other than that, the keyboard is exactly as you would want it. It's perfectly nice to type on and doesn't have any issues. The same, however, can't be said of the touchpad. Now the touchpad operates in two ways. You can either tap it like you would with your smartphone or you can click it. Now the clicking is where the problem is. When you push down on the touchpad, it creates a very loud clicking noise and it, it feels cheap. And that's really the problem. It's not the clicking itself, but it's the fact that it reminds you that this is a low cost device and all the materials are probably fairly low cost as well. However, Techlast have not held back when it comes to internal components. The F5 comes equipped with eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and 128 gigabytes of internal storage. There are built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi adapters. While 128 gigabytes of storage may not sound like a lot, you'd be right, it isn't, but Techlast has made it easy for you to upgrade. On the underside of the laptop is a removable panel, which gives you direct access to the SSD. If you purchase a higher capacity SSD, you can quickly change it in with no problems. Now, while the addition of a one megapixel front-facing camera is welcome, it's also a little unusual. First, because it's one megapixel. Most devices come with around 10 megapixels these days, so it's quite low quality. The second is its placement. Instead of being at the top in the middle of the screen, it's actually the bottom right-hand side, which means that you're gonna get a slightly odd up-angled view of your face. Now, whether that's a problem for you or not will depend entirely on your views on this, um, but it is certainly an unusual angle. On the left-hand side, you have a 3.5 millimeter headphone port, the volume rocker, and the power button. On the right hand side, you can find the internal mic, a micro SD card slot, a micro USB port, a micro HDMI port, and the USB-C charging port. Now the USB-C charging port is interesting because USB-C enables it to be used both for charging and for connecting peripherals. However, if you're getting excited at the prospect of carrying just one single USB-C charger for all your devices, you're going to feel a little let down with this. Techlast have opted for a 24 watt implementation of USB-C. Now this contrasts to the relatively industry standard version of 30 watts. This means that you cannot interchange the chargers with other devices. Unlike many cheaper laptops, the F5 actually comes with a fully licensed version of Windows 10. Now Microsoft have billed Windows 10 as the last edition of Windows because it's gonna get incremental updates throughout its lifetime. Now when you buy an affordable device, there are two major things that many people worry about. The first is bloatware. And fortunately there is no bloatware to be found anywhere on the F5 which is a huge relief because even big manufacturers like HP tend to install lots of unwanted programs on your brand new computer. The second is related directly to Chinese electronics. Many people worry that the Chinese are installing spyware or malware on their devices before they ship. Now Techlast hasn't done itself any favors here. When you first boot up the F5, it's already been set up, which is a little bit suspicious and a bit odd in the first place. It's also worrying to see that secure boot is disabled initially too. However, to check this out, I ran the network monitoring tool Glasswire over a couple of days and found absolutely no suspicious activity whatsoever. 
and there were no rogue processors running in the background either. One of the most important aspects of a mobile device is the battery life. The F5 comes with a 3850 milliamp hour battery. Now that sounds like a big number, but it's got to be put into context. Many of the flagship smartphones shipped in 2018 came with 4000 milliamp hour batteries. So for a laptop running a full operating system, a battery that small isn't likely to go very far. And that proved to be the case. During testing, I did a couple of things like browsing the web, writing a document, and checking emails. And the battery lasted just under three hours. This paltry battery life may actually be the single biggest reason to avoid the F5. A laptop is designed to be a portable device, not be tethered to a charging outlet. So what good really is a laptop that may not even be able to make it through a single Netflix film? Arguably one of the biggest technical downsides of the F5 is the choice of CPU. The laptop is powered by the Intel Celeron N4100, which was formerly known as the Gemini Lake. N4100. Now if you do a quick online search you'll see that this is most commonly used in low-end and cheap devices. That's not to say that it's necessarily a bad CPU, but just don't expect high performance out of it. Analysis performed by the benchmarking company Passmark gave it a CPU score of 2,333. When compared against the Intel Core i5-6360U, which is found on the entry-level MacBook, you'll find that it's particularly lacking. The i5 scores almost double, achieving a CPU score of 4836. So if you're on the lookout for an affordable device that can browse the web and look at some emails and do a bit of basic photo editing, then maybe this is still the right device for you. But if you're hoping to play games, do some high-end photo and video editing, then this probably isn't the laptop for you. One of the F5's most desirable features is its ability to turn into a tablet. People often call these kind of devices hybrids, but hybrid is actually a device that can detach from the base. So this is more accurately a two-in-one device. The screen hinges allow for 360 degree rotation. So the laptop screen can actually flip all the way back and land completely flat onto the underside of the device. Now, this is great for turning it into a tablet, but it does mean that the keyboard is still underneath. When this all works like it's supposed to, Windows will turn off the keyboard so that you don't accidentally press any buttons. The only trouble is it didn't always work. So that did mean that sometimes I'd be holding the tablet and it would start pressing keys and buttons and changing the volume and things like that. And even when things did work, having the keyboard underneath is not a particularly pleasant experience. You know, it's okay, it's fine, but it's not comfortable and you wouldn't want to hold it like that for ages. So when everything works fine, Windows actually switches into what's known as tablet mode. This makes all the interfaces a bit larger, a bit easier to touch, and changes the start screen and things like that. Now this is all great and does make it easier to use with your fingers, but Windows is not a touch first operating system. It doesn't have the kind of elegance of Apple's iOS. Windows has been in development for nearly three decades, so of course it's gonna be easier to use it with a traditional mouse and keyboard. However, it doesn't necessarily mean that you'd want to use it in tablet mode either. So whether you'll be interested in tablet mode kind of depends on what you expect to be able to do with the F5. So then we get to the big question of should you buy the Techlast F5 laptop? Well, although on paper, the Techlast F5 has a lot going for it, it's kind of tough to recommend. If it had been released five years ago, it would have been one of the most cutting edge, low cost devices around. But these days there is a lot of competition in the market. If you're looking for a tablet, Amazon's Kindle Fire Android tablets are only about a tenth of the cost and have kind of dominated the entertainment ground. And if you're looking for a basic kind of laptop device that's good for browsing the internet and checking your emails things, Chromebooks have kind of cornered that market too. And it doesn't hurt that Google has recently implemented the Google Play Store so you can download Android apps onto your Chromebooks too. So ultimately there's nothing wrong with the Techlast F5, but there's nothing right with it either, which is why probably your money would be better spent elsewhere. Thanks very much for watching this review. Do make sure to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe to make use of for twice weekly giveaways and tech tutorials. If you disagreed with anything, let us know down in the comments. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Hey, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. We actually have a Techlast F5 to give away to a lucky viewer, courtesy of gearbest.com. All you have to do is head over to the link in the description and use the giveaway widget. And as a special thank you for watching to the end of the video, enter the code hybrid for some extra entries.